My dear friends, we have some huge breaking news. The sag after strike is finally over and production on upcoming shows can resume. I'm talking about Tales of the Jedi Season 2 and or Season 2, the Rey movie. Thank goodness, it's full speed ahead. There are shows coming up in 2024 that are already filmed, so they weren't affected by this strike. But the one huge show that still had about a month of filming is Andor Season 2. And to celebrate, for the final segment of today's show, we're going to be doing some speculation, and I'm going to share with you a fan theory that ties into Rogue One. It's going to be great, but first, the news. After a gruelling 118 days, sag has officially reached a tentative deal. It's a three-year contract with the studios, bringing an end to the actor's strike. This signals some potentially amazing news for Star Wars content going forward. Delays may not be as long as we thought, because originally they were saying if no deal is reached then we're going to go into January and things just get pushed back further and further and further. So this is pretty historic. So the good news for this is that actors of various shows can stop promoting them. I imagine we're going to see this for the Acolyte and Skeleton crew. sag after celebrated on social media, confirming all picket lines are now closed. The strike is officially over. We're finally going to see some more marketing and hype for the shows from various cast and crew. I see this as a huge win for the actors as well. Negotiating a deal, especially in regards to artificial intelligence, was not simple. And so now, my dear friends, it appears as though we have some more news for Kevin Feige and Star Wars, but this time, it's not to do with any wild rumours, this comes from the man himself. Back at Star Wars Celebration, Star Wars fans were astonished when Kathleen Kennedy denied that Kevin Feige, Marvel Studios president, was ever given a Star Wars film. When back in 2019, Kevin Feige was announced to be producing a venture in the galaxy far, far away. This was being written by Michael Waldron. While it appears as though, even if at one stage that was in production, Kevin has now corroborated what Kathleen said and his movie is no longer in development. While speaking with Entertainment Tonight on the red carpet premiere for The Marvels, Kevin Feige was asked if his Star Wars movie is still happening. He first replied with a question, any Star Wars movie, before then giving a firm no, before smiling and moving on to discussing other topics. Now there is a chance he's just messing with us, and if he is in talks with Lucasfilm he's not going to say anything at this stage, but to me it just confirms and solidifies yet another cancelled Star Wars movie. It's kind of becoming a meme, between Ryan Johnson's trilogy, Patty Jenkins' Rogue Squadron, which would have originally released in a month's time, and the list goes on, Benioff and Weiss, Guillermo del Toro, Damon Lindelof. You can understand why, whenever Star Wars announces anything, there is still that uncertainty in the back of fans' minds, saying, well, what if it doesn't happen? What if this is cancelled too? How do we know for certain any of the officially announced ones are going to take place? The three announced at Star Wars Celebration, the Ray film, Filoni's movie, and the one by Mangold. Cancelled and delayed projects seem to be the norm, and I don't want to be negative when it comes to Star Wars news, but those are the facts. But you know, maybe we're being misled deliberately. Look at the way he grins after answering no. Also the way he says, any Star Wars project? Is he helping to work on something? Is he involved? Is he in talks? It's difficult at this stage to know for certain. Now, if we take Kevin at his word, it seems to debunk a big rumour from the other day, which I did call out at the time and say it's very improbable to be true. This was the rumour that Kevin Feige was somehow taking over the Star Wars franchise and was going to replace Kathleen Kennedy. I think it's pretty safe to say it's pretty bogus. We don't know any details about this supposed project while Michael Waldron was cooking up the contents of his first draft when this was going to be set. I'm sure eventually, very similar to the Jabba the Hutt film, information about this will come out. And so finally, as promised, let's talk about Rogue One as well as Andor Season 2. This is certainly not the first time I've made a video about the vault scene in Rogue One. A couple of years ago, I made a video speculating that one of the Imperial projects, codenamed Mark Omega, is going to be tied to the character of Omega in an upcoming episode. Given the ending of Season 2, I still hold on to this theory and believe it's going to play out in the third and final season. Something tied to Omega's purpose, maybe some programming teased in the recent book Dawn of Rebellion, or one of Dr. Hemlock's projects. But today's video is different. Today we're going to be talking about something else Jyn Erso mentioned, something which had a payoff one year later in 2017 in The Last Jedi, although in the timeline it paid off after three decades. 
let's talk about it. In The Last Jedi, the First Order worked out how to track the Resistance through light speed. They tracked them through hyperspace. Something which surprised our heroes, that was thought to be impossible. The rest of the Resistance storyline in Episode 8 hinges on the fact they can no longer jump to light speed to escape the clutches of General Hux and Kylo Ren. But 35 years prior, during the events of Rogue One, Jyn Erso whispers to herself, hyperspace tracking, navigational systems, meaning that the Empire, long before the Imperial Remnant and the First Order, possessed such capabilities. So why didn't they use them? Well, it turns out according to the Last Jedi Visual Dictionary, very few in the Empire knew about it. It may have been limited to Tarkin, Yalaren, Krennic, and other Imperial senior figures. They say while the Empire was aware of it, it was kept a secret from multiple factions of the regime. They say, quote, originally explored in its infancy by the secret Imperial think tank known as the Tarkin Initiative. It's now evolved from theory into reality. By the time of the First Order, Hux had engineers perfect the system, creating a devastating countermeasure that tracks resistance ships. And I have to wonder, since Disney is still exploring Tarkin in the early Imperial world, not just in Rogue One, but also his novel and The Bad Batch's first two seasons, could we see other branches of the Tarkin Initiative in live action, maybe in Andor Season 2? We know about his Kyber Crystal research, part of Project Stardust, but could we see another of the numerous branches of the Tolkien Initiative test early hyperspace tracking? And there is a precedent ready set. This group shared intelligence with the ISB, especially in the Department of Advanced Weapons Research. The Tolkien Initiative was more widespread and secretive than you might think. They had laboratories and offices all across the galaxy. Eriadu, Ilum, even Endor, Scarif. And I think it'd be such a shame if they didn't connect the various shows, what's going on in The Bad Batch Season 2, what we see in The Summit, which could tie into Season 3 as well. We saw some of Project Stardust in Andor Season 1, and of course Rogue One. So it makes sense to have that connective tissue. It's why I think the big cameo that we're gonna get in Season 2 is Orson Krennic, who's overseeing so much of this project. Any talk-in that we might get is gonna be very brief, I imagine they're going to deepfake or CGI him again, hopefully it's going to look a bit better than in 2016. I don't imagine we're going to see much of him, and we know season 1 had a bigger budget than the upcoming second. But they can expand on some of the research being done, we could see some of the earliest forms of hyperspace tracking. And we know for a fact, both Tony Gilroy and Pablo Hidalgo love experimenting with ships, in the same way we saw the Fondor Holcraft being used by Luthen Rail, and that introduced kyber crystals into spaceships in a very beautiful and new kind of scene. And the Fondor was revolutionary, the way it was powered. Cassian Andor was blown away. He said, quote, What's powering this? I've been in a Fondor Hallcraft. I've flown them. Never seen one do that. And the space lasers that shot out were so cinematic for a Disney Plus show. Luthen and other rebel partisans clearly have some really advanced technology. And what I can see happening is the Imperials after Aldani, after their world was shaken so to speak, after they realise there's a real threat here, they might start to up the stakes, invest a lot more in their research to take down any threat. So with that said my dear friends, share your thoughts on everything we spoke about in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. May the force be with you, always.